Monday, July 31st, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at why uh, the bond market is going to shock the world in the next 12 months. And of course, it's my opinion. <laughs> it's not something set in stone, but, but I don't think it looks good. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think uh, bond yields are going to go a lot higher than most people in the mainstream uh, economic uh, profession in the central banks and governments and academia think. Before uh, we go into that, I uh, just wanted to uh, give a shout out again to my affiliates in the precious metal space. And uh, I think it's more important than ever to try to get away or get out of the system as much as possible. And that's why uh, people have always asked me, where can I buy gold and silver? So here in the UK, uh, I'm affiliated with Gold Investments and uh, all the details of how to get in touch with them and what promo code to use are below in the description. In North America, I'm affiliated with ITM Trading and Miles Franklin. So, just wanted to, uh, before we, we get into the bond market, to talk a little bit about all, all the distractions that we see out there, especially politically, <laughs> not just in the United States, but here in the UK as well. Um, in the UK, uh, we've had here in London, especially uh, a court case that approved uh, for the mayor of London to uh, expand uh, the ULES uh, zone, which is basically a zone where <laughs> to drive around, you have to have a particular car. It can't be older than a, a certain uh, age and it can't be diesel. And uh, if you don't have a car that's uh, appropriate, you're going to be paying £12.50, about $15.00. Uh, just to get out of your drive or drive off onto the road. And uh, the mayor of London is a labor guy called Sadiq Khan. And we've seen the Tories come out and uh, disparage him and say, oh, he's going against the, the, the common people, uh, the poor people are going to get hurt, small businesses are going to get hurt because of this. But uh, it transpires, though, that during lockdown, the mayor of London and his uh, transport for London had to be bailed out by the government because uh, no one was taking, of course, public transport. And one of the conditions that the uh, uh, Tory or conservative government gave them is that he would expand the ULAS zone. Uh, so now they, they're they actually having a go at him for expending it, but they're the ones that really forced him to do it. So they're just playing each other off and, and uh, to make sure that you never focus on yourself. And, and that's why I want to go to uh, a, a passage here in the book, The Nameless War by Captain A.H.M. Ram Ramsey. And this book is quite explosive. He was uh, put in prison during World War II, Captain Ramsey. He was an MP. And uh, I don't agree 100% with everything he says in here, especially the uh, racial, <laughs> religious, uh, his racial and religious views. I agree with the fact that he explains what's going on. Uh, so he... Uh, talks about how the Bank of England was created uh, in 1694, and, and he goes on to say, the political and economic union of England and Scotland was shortly afterwards forced upon Scotland with wholesale corruption and in defiance of formal protests from every uh, county and borough. <laughs> uh, well, this ULES, there are uh, quite a lot of boroughs here uh, in Greater London that protested, didn't want it to be expanded. But it, it didn't matter because the judge <laughs> is uh, going along with uh, government policy. The main objects 
of the Union were to suppress the Royal Mint in Scotland and to force upon her too responsibility for the national debt. And, and, and that's to do with the bond market. And we're going to come to that in a minute, of course. The grip of the moneylender was now complete throughout Britain. The danger was that the members of the new joint parliament would sooner or later, in the spirit of their ancestors, challenge this state of affairs. And here is the important part. And you might not agree with me. You might still think uh, politics and parties matter. And that's your prerogative. But uh, hopefully younger people who are just starting to look into this, they will realize that it's a waste of time, that you need to focus on yourself, your family, your loved ones, your friends, your community, and do the best you can to, uh, yeah, to uh, improve your situation and not, not wait for, for these people, these uh, politicians to do it. So it says, to provide against this, well, against parliament, like people rising up, Therefore, the party system was now brought into being, frustrating true national reaction and enabling the wire pullers to divide and rule. So there you go, divide and conquer. Using their newly established financial power to ensure that their own men and their own policies should secure the limelight and sufficient support from their newspapers, pamphlets and banking accounts to carry the day. So there you go. ULES has been playing against us. <laughs> Eventually, it's going to spread throughout the country. Uh, the Tories are just playing uh, politics. Uh, they're the ones who pushed the mayor of London to do it. So back to the bond market. And the bond market, in my opinion, is the most important market out there because it's, uh, it determines the, the price of credit, the price of borrowing, the price of money, if you want to call it. And uh, the rate is set, unfortunately, in the government bond market, which is basically where the national debt is traded. The national debt that they've been able to lumber us with for hundreds of years through the central banking uh, monopoly and the fact that the government and the central banks and the banks work together. Uh, they're given the power to create uh, this uh, fiat currency, credit, national debt, out of thin air. And uh, who pays for it? We do. We, we do it through inflation, through taxation, regulation, and it's going to continue. And uh, the pillar that underpins this national debt and underpins government power is the bond market. So uh, the bond market has to stay under control you can't have bond prices collapse because their whole system implodes. Uh, and uh, I'm seeing, you know, a, a lot of uh, mainstream financial publications like the FT, also Reuters, and they're all part of this globalist cabal, of course. Uh, over the weekend, FT said confidence grows that Federal Reserve can deliver a soft landing for U.S. economy. They're all talking about the fact that inflation is falling. Uh, they look at inflation, of course, not as the creation of currency and credit out of thin air, which is still out of control, but at, at a manipulated, tinkered with statistic called the CPI. It's been tinkered here in the U.K. It's been tinkered in the U.S., um, but then you, you get stories like uh, this that I've just seen here from Reuters. Analysis, dwindling excess savings, good scupper markets, soft lending hopes. So they're not really sure of what's going on. Uh, but one of the themes that seems to be uh, coming out now, especially from Wall Street, the city, the central banks, is that bonds are going to do really well, <laughs> government bonds, mainly because in the last 40 years, when you've had recessions or slowdowns, people went into government bonds. And why is that? Well, because the trend was for lower rates. 
I know uh, since 08, these rates, or even before that, since 01, the rates have been manipulated uh, by the central banks. They've been lower than they should have been. Uh, but uh, I've, I've done cycle work and uh, research, and I've done videos about this, that uh, there's like a 40-year cycle in, in interest rates. So the U.S. 10-year yield bottom uh, in late 1941, uh, uh, just below 2%. And for the next 40 years until 1981, uh, the 10-year yield went up all the way to almost 16%. And since 1981, up until the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, uh, those yields kept going lower. I think it bought them around 0 0.3 uh, during the uh, lockdown and the March 2020 crisis. And, and I think uh, the cycle is over, the downward cycle, the trend. And that means that government bond prices, especially uh, the longer term government bond prices are going to suffer. It's going to be like the 70s when the bond bear market really culminated uh, and then topped, of course, yields topped in 1981. Government bonds were called certificates and confiscation. <laughs> and we've seen last year in the beginning of this year how even government bonds have led to uh, banking collapses because we're still told, like here uh, in this Reuters article, that uh, uh, government bonds are still safe haven and they're nothing but, especially in the bond bear market, especially in a period where uh, yields are going to go a lot higher. And that's my opinion. So it says here, expecting the savings drain to hasten recessions, investors favor safe haven government bonds, safe haven. They're still at it. Um, and I've spoken to a good friend of mine who I came uh, to London to work with back in 1992. And he's a bond guy. He's in touch with actually economists in the Federal Reserve System. And he called me the other day and he said, oh, bonds are the place to be. Uh, he likes gold too, but I didn't argue with him. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, he's going to be proven wrong about bonds, right about gold. You've had since 1981 up until, yeah, the summer of 2020, those yields uh, went down. The trend was down, which was good for bonds. And what does that do? Well, that allows uh, our uh, consumer-based economies in the West, especially the US, UK, to keep going, uh, to keep uh, creating the debt, uh, the fiat currency, and buying real things from, from other people around the world who are not part of the club, whose uh, bond markets and currencies are not manipulated by the central banks and the major banks. And that's another reason why I think people are going to be proven wrong in the next 12 months because uh, the uh, fact that the BRICs want to create their own system is not just about gold. It's about the bond market. Uh, they're not going to have to park their funds in Western bond markets as much as they used to because they want to get away from this system. The bond market allows the West to print money out of thin air and spend it and buy real things and the rest of the world is sick of it. And I think this is one of the reasons, well, they're going to be wrong because there's going to be less demand for bonds. The other reason I think they're going to be proven wrong is that our governments are still spending <laughs> Uh, massively. They're running huge deficits, deficits that are synonymous with crises. And what do I mean by that? Well, during the 08 crisis and in 2020, they ramped up deficit spending to keep things going, to keep the GDP positive. But they're, uh, they're at uh, rates right now of the budget deficit in the US is going to approach 10% <laughs> in this current fiscal year. And that's crazy. So when the economy is slowed down, and I think it's slowing down, as you can see here from uh, David Brady or uh, on Twitter, at Global Pro Trader, he says, employers have cut 458,000 jobs so far this year, a 244% increase from the 133,000 cut up to June 2022. It's the highest first half total since 2020. 
Excluding 2020, it's the highest Jan to June total since 2009, when 897,000 jobs job cuts were announced. Still by the employment numbers. Uh, I have to say, I don't know where he got this data from, uh, the source, but I don't think he's putting this out there, uh, uh, not being honest about it. And I trust him more than the Bureau of Labor Statistics or the ONS here in the UK. So what's, what's going to happen when there is a recession and we have government uh, spending and debt going through the roof? There's going to be less tax receipts. Uh, less, <laughs> yeah, uh, the deficit is going to go higher. The government is going to have to borrow more, sell more bonds. So it's going to be a nightmare. And, and like I said, the mainstream economists, Wall Street, City of London, they still just look at inflation as the CPI. Uh, they don't look at the fact that the inflation, uh, the creation of currency and credit uh, by the trillions, all that credit and, and currency is still out there and it's going to seep through into the system. So that's my uh, forecast. And I know it's difficult to forecast these things. But in the next 12 months, uh, bond markets are going to shock the world. We're going to see even higher yields. Um, and the other one, the other thing that is just starting to evolve as well, of course, is Japan. They're starting to tighten, and, and that's going to be another factor that's going to hurt uh, our bond markets. So, and I think government, uh, central banks are going to lose a lot of credibility because people are going to realize that they haven't really defeated real inflation. And investors are run, going to run away from bonds. So there you go. With that, let's quickly go through where the markets are this morning. It's 8.31 a.m. London time. So we've got spot gold at 1955. It's down four bucks. High has been 1961, low 1952. Silver is down seven cents at 24.26. High has been 41, low 18. The Dow Futures is up 26 points. NASDAQ is down 10. S&P 500 is up 2. To the currencies, sterling is up slightly at 128.62. Uh, the euro uh, as well up slightly at 110.24. And talking about sterling, on Thursday, the Bank of England is expected to raise rates from 5 to five and a quarter. There's a lot of talk as well that the Bank of England will not have to go uh, much uh, above or even maybe close to 6% because inflation is under control, even though it's more like a CPI is more like 9% instead of 79 uh, So again, they're going to get this all wrong. The Bank of England, how can you defeat a uh, real inflation when you've kept the base rate <laughs> several hundred basis points below wh where the uh, CPI is even, even though I don't consider the CPI inflation. So uh, they're, they're diluted in my opinion. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's out at midday on Thursday. They're going to decide uh, if they really want to fight inflationary pressures, they need to do a real surprise hike like they did the last time. Uh, the 50 basis points was a surprise. But I, I, I think uh, the market is expecting a quarter. So dollar, dollar is very strong against the yen. <laughs> I, I told you that uh, the Japanese are going to try to keep uh, inflating. And that means a weaker currency. We're at 142.09. We got down to 138 last week, the dollar. So it's rebounded quite a bit. It's up two thirds of a percent. Uh, the dollar is down slightly versus the U1 at 7.1465. And talking about Japan, we're going to come to the uh, bond market in a minute. And we're going to look at the JGBs as well. Uh, but we'll continue with the currencies right now. Uh, we're seeing the Aussie dollar back up a bit, up three quarters of a percent, uh, just below 67. Uh, uh, the dollar uh, is down 0.2 versus the Canadian dollar, 132.32. 
and the Kiwi dollar is up two thirds, uh, just below 62. Let's look at the general commodities. Well, WTI crude is above 80. It's up uh, slightly. It's at 80.50, virtually unchanged. So is Brent. It's at 84.40. Uh, platinum is down five bucks, trading around 933, 933 that is. High grade copper is up a quarter of a percent, just below 395. So now to the bond market. And yes, the Bank of Japan, they've tweaked <laughs> their uh, yield curve control policy. Uh, they still want a target of 0.5 in the 10-year JGB, but they said that they will buy, if it gets up to 1%, they'll start buying to get it back down. So I think the market is testing it. Uh, we saw that yield today go get up to 0.61. Right now it's at 0.6. And I think uh, they're in there uh, probably uh, doing more more QE or yield curve control, even though we haven't gotten up to 1%. And why do I think that? Well, because the yen is so weak. It's weakened further. And uh, we need to keep an eye on the Japanese government bond market. And I know that uh, in the last few months it's been... No, really uh, pretty quiet, but uh, I think it's really important, as I've said before, uh, to the UK bond market, the gill yields, uh, the two year is uh, at 506, so still above 5%, the 10 year is at 440. <laughs> I think these lows, these, these rates, these levels are still very low. And uh, a lot of people seem to think the Bank of England has won the battle versus inflation that these are going to go back down and bond prices are going to go up. As I said, I don't buy into that. So the treasury market overnight, we've got the two year yield at uh, 490. So it's virtually unchanged. And the 10 year is trading uh, at 399. So uh, I think uh, that 4%, as I said, is very important. And the higher we go above 4%, uh, the worse it is for all the financial markets. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.